Welcome to my CEH version 9 material. We are dealing with chapter 14 out of the Cybex book, which happens to be SQL injections. So what's interesting is SQL injection used to be a very common, but because this is a known exploit, more and more organizations are requiring some type of like CSS validation. That way SQL code cannot be ran in a user dialog box. It's actually uh, preventing it. So SQL injections as we understand them are slowly going away. But I guess the first question we have to understand is what is an SQL injection? And just like I was saying before is uh, it's SQL code that you can actually run at a dialog box. For example, a user prompt, uh, enter username. Instead of putting the user name, you could put in an SQL string, and it would trick sometimes the database into running that string. Thus, if you did a insert or if you did a delete, uh, you could modify tables. So an SQL injection is where a database is attacked using query language, typically from outside the database. An attacker can execute arbitrary SQL commands through specific web applications. Uh, again, the typical injection was a flaw in the application and a flaw in validating what's actually put in the user text. So the goal of the attack was to gain information or to modify the database. Uh, I worked on one database for a payday loan company and what ended up happening was an SQL injection actually caused the database itself to be modified and change loan amounts for like a hundred different users. That was the entire intent of that SQL injection was just to modify the database so that they could all get different payday loan prices or to have their payday loan forgiven. Okay, so the results of an SQL injection, uh, alteration of the data, it could be some type of data extraction or data modification, altering transactions, or long-term data destruction. Uh, identity spoofing, uh, that's more of a far-fetched one. I guess it's a possibility, but that's not one that comes to mind when I think about it. Web applications. Well, one of the big things is we have lots of databases, and typically we do not interact with the database directly. Normally, we interact with a, a front end. Typically, it's a web front end. Every time you go to log in somewhere, you're interacting with a database because it's going to store usernames and passwords on the back end. It won't store it in. It will, won't store it on the website. It will store it in the database that may be controlling the website. Web applications also be, uh, depend on browser type. Uh, with that, we could have it uh, browser-based, client-based, or mobile app-based, depending on the type of web application, kind of what it's doing. More and more of what we're dealing with now is actually mobile apps, and it could be some type of back-end like, as a service type item that the mobile app only is getting the front-end portion. So let's talk about a traditional client-server web application. This is where we have a traditional server and it serves clients. So the server application would be on the web server. The clients would be uh, requests coming in maybe via a web browser or other web-based app enabled applications. It's yeah, used to collect information on a server, maybe to process it or to modify the process. Server-side versus client-side technology could be things like databases or deployment languages. Is the code compiled on the server side or on the client side? Does it have to be on the server side for it to do a process before it sends you an output? We have different types of databases. Relational is a common one, but there's also object-oriented and distrib uh, distributed, though most of my background is more relational and object-oriented. The structure is typically, again, a presentation layer, a logical layer, and a data layer. All of these in conjunction make up that structure. For example, 
we could have different types of items within the web application. Authentication process, that'd be the login, logout. Accessing the web server. Again, that's gonna be things like its permissions. And then there's gonna be the, what they're gonna be accessing on that server if there's specific application controls. Other common problems with web applications could be things like flaw web design, being able to copy a website or being able to cause a buffer overload because of the software issue and then thus gain additional information that you weren't supposed to. Error messages are pretty common. Understanding the different types of error messages, for example, a 404 error message, that might be kind of important. Sadly, there is a lot of information that you can pull from these error messages if you bother to read them and understand what they mean. Some of the common flaws and attacks typically, sadly, are caused by misconfiguration because of inexperience. A lot of people put up websites that have no idea what they're doing and thus they cause an, uh, a vulnerability. Things like data input validation, that way we can actually verify the data that's being inputted and that it's valid before we actually accept it. Basic reconnaissance could be things like locating a target. And then that's more the reconnaissance and enumeration, which we've already talked about. SQL and in, uh, injection countermeasures. Honestly, up-to-date software is going to be the big ones. Maintenance. Look at things like deploying an IDS slash IPS. Do hardening. Use the concept of least privileges. There's always a good one. I was working with a travel agency. And what they did for protection was they brought in a person to develop the reservation system. Well, that person had no concept of least, priv least privileges. So all admins, all accounts were admins. All admins were admins. All users were admins. Everyone was an admin. The account that connected the web front end to the database back end, that was an admin. Well, quickly, pretty quick within that organization, they realized how big of an issue that was because they started leaking credit card information and quickly there got shut down. That's actually the end of this chapter. Pretty short, pretty sweet. All about SQL injections. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thank you.